Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my studio with my little dog, Boo, over here. She loves to snore through my videos. I do polymer clay and beading, and today I want to show you what you can get out of this package of polymer clay. Now, I've started this already with two other videos where I've created these focal beads, but today I am just going to show you how I worked with what was left of that box and what you can create with just the scraps of clay so you don't need to keep going out and buying more and more clay and getting more and more stuff. I've just used a box of polymer clay, some gold leaf, and a tissue blade. You'll need a roller. Now I used a pasta machine just because it's a little quicker. It took me about 39 hours to go through the whole box which is a pound and a half in this box. And whenever you are going to purchase this box make sure it's the Primo one not the Sculpey. The Sculpey is a few dollars less but there is no savings because there, it's not strong enough for beads. But let me show you what we create out of this box I've created. Now just as a reminder, here's the box of clay. So it's a pound and a half of clay. And they only give you these little tiny one ounce packages. So it's a little bit of a challenge when you get to the muddy colors. My advice to you when you start out, use the muddy colors last and use them as bead filler. Create all your canes with the brighter colors now I've created all of these beads. This was a half a tray, so I still had to show you I couldn't fit it all on. And this is pretty piled up with beads. I'll go through these individually more close up. Now if we look at them a tray at a time, I've done these beads. This one is a separate video and I'll link it below. And they're called origami beads. And this is the same, just different colors in a second video. Just to show you what I can get out of this same package of clay. These are all the same cane that we created the larger beads with and I just created some smaller beads that I could use in earrings and other things. Other smaller little origami beads, leaf beads, these are fabulous to use in a fringe or a bracelet like this just to give you an idea. Something like this you could do it with fall colors and maybe some reds would be really pretty. Some smaller lentil beads fabulous pods out of what was left over from some of the canes we made. And then these are some of my favorites. These are Natasha beads just created with the scraps that we had left over from making little canes and things. And then this little checkerboard beads. I actually really love these as a nice contrast. These will go wonderful with the origami beads and think of some orange crystals in between. How beautiful. And that was just one of the trays. We've got this other tray. I've got this beautiful embossed lentil that we created on both sides using just the little canes we created from the same origami cane. And you can even slice your canes into beads. This was the same cane, once again made smaller. We have all these complementary beads. This little burst cane, which is like a flower, but I just didn't pinch in the, the petals. So it created like these little balls that look like little bursts. I love those. We made some marguerite flowers. This same cane that I've just basically sliced, flattened these out. And these are just the cane that is sliced that I pinched in the petals. Also. Some more beautiful flowers. And you don't need a lot of clay to create these. Some wonderful little leaf beads. These are great for fringe. I always love little beads. And then I've got this whole pile of Natasha cabochons that this one's a bead obviously but we can use for anything. I've got look at what beautiful earrings you could make out of these. And then moving on to the last tray because there is more and this is all that same package. We have some of these marguerite flower beads which you can use in something like my bracelet. You can see how that really complements and once you put some crystals or some pearls in the middle, they're beautiful. And here are my favorites, just some bright green lentils. I didn't want to make leaves out of these just because I loved this color combination. And we've got more flowers that I couldn't fit on the other tray. And then some folded focals. I love these for earrings. Some little drops at the bottom. And our final ones, some larger flower beads. So all of that comes from just this package and I did not do anything fancy so you can follow along and figure out how to make all these or 
you can just start going on your own and see what you can get. So let's get started because it's going to be so much fun. Now I want to show you what we're starting out with. This is what's left over from the canes of making the kaleidoscope canes and the beads. This is the smaller piece that I've reduced from a larger piece. And this is all the clay I have left, all just like little pieces of colors and stuff. So this is where most people struggle, is what to do with this leftover stuff. They feel like this is just a waste of clay and what can I do with it? Well, this is, first off, this tray is like the frosting on a cake. This is my most favorite part. And this is just raw clay that's something fun to play with. So this will be a lot more fun for me probably than you guys realize because I just love playing with all this leftover stuff. Now, I also have this tray of beads that I've already made. These were the kaleidoscope beads that I made for the video, and these were the other ones I made for the first video. I also took the, this cane and reduced it down smaller. Now, unfortunately, my camera fell on it, which happens because I'm videoing. I made all these little beads with this cane, and most of you would say, oh, wow, that's perfect. You have a match set. Yeah, I agree with you. You have a match set but I'm not good with that matchy-matchy stuff. I'll probably use these on something else because I like things that don't match, actually, but more complement each other. Let's start out with this tray because this tray is just scrumptious. Let's start out with these little pieces. Now, this piece is this piece has not much left to it. As you can see, there's red coming up the side of the cane, so that one's kind of worthless. This, These two are pretty good. They both have this nice green on them, and there's quite a bit, so we can make some pods with them. And I'm going to use these little scraps that I have left over of copper clay that I punched out. Now, just to add a little bit more sparkle, because I just love that little sparkle on the edge of gold leaf. I think it just changes things up and gives so much detail to just plain clay. So I'm just going to roll these a little bit in gold leaf. Now I'm just going to roll it into the clay a little bit. You want to make sure it gets a little crack to it so that it's in there nice and tight. Sometimes I like to use one of these little discs and this is two of them stuck together. So it just depends whether I want smaller or larger pods. I usually find building a bead stash is more interesting if I just make a bunch of smaller beads and stack them together. And I'll do smaller and larger because I never really know what I'm going to do with my beads until I start beading. So we're going to make these into a nice teardrop shape. So make a ball and then pinch one end. And now I can see which side is up. So I'm just going to pinch this at the top. So I have a nice leaf formed. And if you want to reduce it a little, reduce it. I kind of like this size. And I'm just going to cut about 12, between 12 and 16 pieces. And just as I do my pods, I put one on the end. That's a point. Oh, I've got so much gold leaf on me. These are going to be very sparkly. On the opposite end, so it complements it, I put my other leaf. Now in between those seams, I'm just going to add another leaf right there and continue to do that all the way around. And even though I have some gold leaf underneath there for my finger, I'm leaving it. I think it looks really pretty. So when the leaf goes everywhere, just keep going. It just makes everything a little bit more sparkly. And it's very humid here, so it's sticking to me a lot more. And we're just gonna continue going up that pod in between those leaves. So there you can see, I've got a beautiful little pod bead. I will continue with the rest of whatever's left here. Now from that little bit of cane that we had left, those two little pieces, I got six little pods. So I'm gonna put these on the side and bake them. And we have this left, and we have some other leaves left. We have these other pieces left that are roses, but they're, they're really kind of shot. They're too small. This is a little piece of a swirl, but it's at the end here, so there really won't be much to it. But I'm feeling that I could take these and chop them up and make some beautiful lentil beads out of them. I do need a little spice, so to say, in them. So let's add, let's add some of this. This is pretty. It's got a little blue in it, a little green in it, and yeah, we'll, we'll take this and add it to it because this will spice it up with that blue. To create my lentils, I just take this and chop it up into little pieces. Now, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I just want the colors to all blend. And these little cane bits give me some of the most beautiful blends. Now, I want to toss it so that I get all this little blue 
and green kind of mixed up in there. I want it to be a nice highlight. Don't. It just depends how you want your colors to blend. You don't want to leave them in one big hunk like this because it's nicer if they blend together and I kind of break up that yellow. And now I'm just going to squish it all together. So make sure you get all the air out, get it all squished together so that it's nice and tight. I'm just going to take some of these scraps. This is like the perfect thing to do with scraps of leaf because it's so fine and it breaks up so thin. And for some reason, I don't know why this leaf that they fold like an inch over on the top. But I don't want it on the whole cane. I just want a little, just a nice little sparkle of it on the top because I don't want it to overpower my cover colors. And if you do anything, just do a little bit on the other side, not too much, just a little bit. And you can do gold and silver if you'd like. Just because this is just mostly yellow and red and warm colors, I'm just going to leave the gold on it. Now we're just going to reduce this. And what size to reduce this to? If you want a large focal bead, just cut it up right now and then roll it. I want mine to be smaller because I really like having smaller beads for fringes or even if I want to make an, a triple layer necklace, lots of little beads instead of just one big bead in the middle. Now, if you want your beads to be more blended, twist your rope a little. And the more you twist this, the more they'll be blended. So I don't want it twisted too much because I like that mix in there. Now this is my marks it tool. It's just a homemade one. If you have a brand new one, just mark it. If not, I have a separate video that shows how to do this. And the nice thing is it marks it exactly the same amount. So my beads will be a very similar size. They'll never be the exact same size because I'm not capable of rolling them out the exact same size, nor do I want to. I don't want them to look too manufactured. Now just chop these up into little bits so that they're all even. And I like to make mine into a little ball just to start with. So usually my left hand will make them into a ball while my right hand rolls them. And the way you're going to roll them is take an acrylic block and just turn it. Now this takes a little bit of a feel to get to do this that they all come out the same. So your first 10,000, maybe 100,000 or so may be a little off from each other, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. And there you see I have my beautiful swirl and I love these colors because they're like citrusy and fall with that little bit of gold in them. Now if you're not good at rolling these out and you're just starting at this which you can make these into leaves and salvage them so you just pinch the bottom and then take a needle tool and go down the middle and create little veins. and then just go in the sides and create a little indent and I'll do this to the other side and you have a beautiful leaf bead so if you didn't have a perfect swirl you have a perfect leaf either way no worries I like to let these sit for about a half hour to two hours before I put my holes in them because they do have a tendency to squish up on you especially after you've got the clay all soft and malleable so that you could make your lentils out of them now you can see how many beads I got just out of that piece of clay I have this one little piece of clay left that wasn't enough for a bead but we are going to throw that little scrap in with this pile that's left over from this cane We'll use that later. Now these I want to turn all into leaves. I really like the way this leaf looks. And now you can see I have them all turned into leaves. Now there's two different ways you can skewer these as a leaf. You can put a hole just right in the center of the top there. Make sure you put it down far enough that there's enough clay to hold it. You don't want to be too close to the top. It won't hold. It'll eventually break. Or you can just go straight through the bead. This is my favorite way to do it. Now back to our trays, because I want to empty this tray out first, I just feel like 
This is all the little scraps we have left. Let's clean this out as much as possible. And then we'll have these colors to work with and add to things. I really actually like this little checkerboard cane. I think this is a cool little cane and I just wanna make some basic beads out of it. So the easiest thing to do with that is I have this kind of muddy brown clay. I'm going to use that as bead filler. So we're going to use this as bead filler and we have all these little canes. Now, once again, I've got to get some more of that gold leaf. Now I'm just going to take some slices off of this and I want these slices as thin as I can get them. And I don't care if they're full slices, half slices, partial slices, but I want them very thin. Now this is rolled out on a number one on the pasta machine so I can just cut it right on my little paper here. Now I prefer to have a slew of smaller beads than a whole lot of focal beads. I'm just going to put the cane around on that little ball. And wherever I have that gold edge, as you can see how pretty it is, sorry about my snoring puppy, I'm just going to make sure that that gold edge layers over. I really like the gold edge. And you'll see what I mean after I roll this. So this is a rather small bead, but this will be really pretty. Now I rubbed it against the table, and you can either pinch the ends and make it into an oval bead, and you can see how you get that beautiful sparkle and just that little bit of a pattern in there. I like squishing mine down into a disc and that extra piece of gold leaf stuck, but that'll be really pretty when I string it. I will continue to make whatever I can get out of all these little pieces and come back. So I've used up all my canes and I ended up with 45 beads, which is pretty amazing because you saw we just had like little one inch nubs of cane. So when you look at some of those cane ends and you think, oh, it's not worth saving, look at all of those beads just out of that nub. So I have my beads all skewered. This is just a tile from the hardware store and an old, a piece of an old t-shirt. Now I just put the t-shirt in the middle. Make sure it doesn't hang over and hit your heating element because it definitely will start a fire. Just keep it on top here. You bake polymer clay at such a low temperature that it won't start on fire. I've had this t-shirt for years now. And don't worry about the beads touching each other because the pop right apart. I'll show you after I bake them. And now they're all baked and I'm back. And you can see the t-shirt did not start on fire. That's the constant question I get. It's on the tile. It's fine. It's a low temperature cook. Now you can see where the beads have touched each other. They just pop right apart. So there's no big deal. There's no marks on them of where they touched each other. Now if you have a focal bead that you want to keep real pristine, maybe this isn't for you. But for these little beads, I can't tell where they touched each other. And now I'm back to our tray. I actually have this cane left and it's about an inch and a half. It's pretty good. So we're going to use this and make a few pods. And since I have this left over, we're just going to use this as the filler for our pods because there's, oh, actually there's almost a half an inch on this cane. I'm going to squeeze this one down, reduce it, see if there's anything to salvage out of it. But I can use these as the filler for my pod and then I also have one other little scrap left. And here you can see just those little scraps of canes gave us five beautiful little pods. So don't see those little scraps as garbage. They're treasures. So now we've got these little scraps left. Let's go back to our tray. I'm just going to keep working off of this tray to see how I go. Now this stuff is all some scraps here. So let's try and take this and this one's actually got a real nice cane to it, so I don't want to waste this. This would make some real pretty beads. I could make more of these beads with this, so I, I don't want to throw this cane out. I'm going to I'm going to use these scraps, this scrap of clay, and make more of these beads, and then we'll do something with this. Now I definitely won't have enough filler with this, so I'm going to take some of this khaki color, I guess you'd call it. It's like a khaki gold. It's not one of my favorite colors as you look at next to skin color, it's not very attractive. So I'm going to use that, mix this, and use it as my bead filler. Well, it was only a little piece of cane, and I got 10 beads out of it, which you might say, oh, I don't know if that's worth it. 10 beads is 10 beads, when you're looking for a little something extra to finish up that necklace. Now I do have, these were the ones we already made, so you can see they would make a nice complement together if you wanted just even difference in sometimes size. Sometimes I just like mixing up the size or the differences in the beads. It just adds more texture to your jewelry. I'm working with this little tiny cane here 
and it before was this larger cane that we created these beads out of. And so all I did was reduce it and I thought making a smaller one, I've never made smaller ones before, could be really pretty on an earring or just in between other beads. I really like the way this looks. Now the white there is just liquid clay that I put in there to hold that rhinestone. We've created a ball from just a cutter. I've covered the ball with, with the scraps. This was the end that I cut off. Remember this cane had a dent in it. I dropped my camera on it. So then I rolled out the ball flattened it into a disc and we're going to create this the same way we created the larger version I cut two thicker sheet two thicker cuts of it this is like the thickness of a nickel and then I'm cutting it into thirds randomly I'm cutting it according to the pattern that is in here and you can pick whichever part of the pattern you want to cut it on but basically the way we put this together was in six pieces so it's real easy to see where the thirds go. And now that I have that tiny piece, once again, we're just going to bend it up and pinch it a little. So I've got the two on there. It's such a busy pattern, it's hard to see. It was easier to see when it was larger. So if you have any problems with this, seeing this, you can watch the larger video. So now I have it in thirds and I'm just pressing it down just to keep it in place. Now I'm just making another U and putting it on top. And I'll take a knitting needle. You can use a skewer, anything you have. And I want to turn it sideways so you see how high up my petals are. Now I'm just going to push them down. Push them down, shape them however you want. I like a little bit of layer in them. And for the center of this, I'm just using some liquid clay. You can use any brand, any type, it'll do. You just need liquid clay to hold the rhinestone in. It's probably a four millimeter. I used to actually take rhinestones out of old jewelry because I couldn't find rhinestones. So I used to go to thrift stores and flea markets and buy old rhinestone jewelry just to pull it apart. But you can see how pretty these are. So I will skewer these up at the top and up at the bed on, on the bottom. So it's two hold bead and this way if I decide to make earrings out of them I can put a teardrop off of it. There's lots of things I can do with these with the two holes or the other problem is you don't want them to if they're in the center just flip so when you hang it in a necklace rather than hanging nicely like that it'll just flip forward and you'll wonder why are my beads all hanging funny? It's where you put the holes in the beads so I just like to go about a third of the way up, do a third of the way on the bottom. So when you see those two holes, this bead can't flip. The other thing is if you hang it as an earring, it gives you a perfect spot for you to have a little drape there. You could have a drop coming off of it. You could have fringe coming off of it. Lots of neat things you could do with this. Now I got seven of those little beads out of that one little stick of clay and I have just these ends here. And you probably wonder, how the heck do I cut these little ends? Well, my table is glass, so they stick to the table. And I basically just take my razor and shave the top because I can still use these little pieces here. I made a little teardrop with this one, so I'll show you how I did that. Now to make a teardrop, I'm just going to take that ball and pinch it. And you can flatten it on one side and then flatten it on the other. And I'm trying to get it the same as this so that I can use these for earrings. And these would be really pretty as a pendant off the other earrings, or you could just use these and there. You can see two little teardrops in two pendant earrings, real easy, just using your scraps. So these are things that most of you may have thrown away. Don't throw them away. You put the hole in these either way. You can skewer it straight down like that. Personally, I would skewer it straight across or straight through the top here, just because I like the way that looks better. But either way, it would make a great little earring, or you could even use this with a larger pendant on top and have the smaller pendant and then the drop. So if you didn't have enough clay, you still could use it like that. I've gotten lots of little beads that I can use for all different things. So when you have these little cane ends, don't throw them away. So here is the actual pieces that were totally unusable except for this one, which I pulled out for the video. And I only cut one of them, so can't really do too much with that. I'm just going to chop this up and once again, make some lentil beads.
as you can see I got a really nice I will continue to just roll all of these out so I finished rolling out my beads I got about 43 out of this you can see they're all different sizes I'm not really concerned now because it's 85 degrees here and I don't have the AC on so that I don't you don't hear it in the background my beads came out wonky now this may happen to you just because you don't know how to roll them perfectly yet there's a million reasons why it can happen but I don't always want this shape either. Sometimes I find this shape hard to work with. I like the little swirl on each side of the bead, but I want it round. No big deal. Just squeeze it. Take the edges in, squeeze it, and make sure you start to get a little ball. You don't want to lose that pretty swirl in the middle that you have there. And just gently roll it in your hands just to shape it. And now I have this beautiful bead that has both the swirls of unusual colors on each side. And I just have to skewer it. Now I don't skewer these right away. And if you noticed, I put them on a piece of paper. The reason is this clay is really soft because I've been handling it so much. And if I go to skewer this right now, it'll distort. So it's just easier for me to switch it up and keep making little, I call them lentil pearls because they're just round lentil beads. I don't know what else to call them. I'm terrible at names. Just ro roll it back and forth in your hand. Try not to swirl it too much because you'll distort the swirl that you have in the clay. But these are such pretty beads to use in so many things. And you're just going to have to be very careful when you make these round not to distort them so just whacking them on every side at the same time it'll slowly form into a round ball better for me to show you close up after I've skewered them how much different they look because I can get them more refined and you can see how they have little swirls let me flip them over they have a little swirl on each side and the other way I like to do them is flatten them into these little discs so you still see the swirl on them on both sides. But it just changes the shape. So don't be afraid if the lentils are a shape that are difficult for you to work with. Reshape them. Right now I want to take this blue scrap and there's not a lot of it. So I'm just going to chop it up and once again make my little mix out of it. Now you could make a Natasha which would be very beautiful with this. Because it's got some really nice colors in it but um... I'm feeling a, something a little bit different. So I'm just going to roll this out and give it a little twist. That looks much better already. Now I want this pretty thin. So I'm going to make it into two pieces. I love the turquoise and brown combination. There we go, we're getting some nice twist in there. So when we twist it, we're getting this beautiful stripe in there. And the more you twist, the finer your stripe will become. Now I'm just going to cut. So now I've used almost all my clay. This little piece left. I'm just going to make it into a circle and I'm going to connect the ends. So when I connect the ends, make sure they're, you push them together real tight and then you blend them. You want to make sure that they're not going to come apart when I'm doing the next steps. So now I'm going to make a triangle. I'm going to push the triangle in in the middle. So now you've got your triangle and we're just going to take both the sides and pull them up. So right there you have a bead. To. I like to pinch the top as I'm rotating and pinch the bottom as I'm rotating. And give it a little twist. And just shape it on the ends. And you'll see you get this really interesting barrel bead. I call it a folded focal. These are quite small. You can make them as fat as you like, as skinny as you like. I've got four of these. I like to let these sit for about an hour or two before I skewer them. Just now this little smidgen here is just perfect for Natasha. So I'm just going to twist it up a little 
and I like to make mine into a square or a rectangle. I just like them better in a block. I find that they unfold better. But it's a very small mm. piece of clay. So I want you to realize you don't have to have a lot of clay to do this. I'm cutting it in half and cutting it in half again. And if I don't like the way this looks, it can always become scrap clay that we use in the center. Now we just need to find the two pieces that match. They match and they mirror themselves. Now I work very small. Most polymer clayers work much larger than I do. But I think it's because I use so many seed beads and little pieces. Now, if you wanted for earrings, you could trim these up and make them similar. Now, here is just a piece of a sheet protector. You can use cereal box bags. You can use even another piece of paper. But the nice thing about the clear page protector is you can see through it perfectly. I've been using paper in the past or different types of things. And you couldn't see through them where I found this is much nicer. Now, I just like to smooth it out. There's a little air pocket in there where it didn't blend. Here's my most famous tool. It's a gift card wrapped with a piece of paper and I just taped it on here. The reason that I use paper is it doesn't stick to the clay. So it's really good at shaping this and forming it and I will just play with this until I get the desired result. And if you just press it down on it, you'll get that to come back together. Just be careful not to distort the bead. But working on a piece of paper allows you to twist and turn this around and look at it. And if you want to put lines on your paper so that you can get more of a shape to it, some, uh, something to follow, more like graph paper. I do have graph paper, but I save that. I just find this easier to work on a regular piece of paper if I want to take a pencil and put some lines on it. And there you can see how nice and smooth I get it. Now the other thing you can do is always, if you have a little bit, like there is a slight seam in there, I may put a little UVA resin on this after it's baked and that will fill everything in and even it all out. So here we have just the leftover scrap from that larger cane and this could get very muddy. You're probably wondering, why don't I finish working with this one and you know we could put it all together. This, when it reduces, is going to get muddy. There's no question, it's going to become bead filler. So this one, this, these larger pieces, especially these, are probably the best pieces I have. And there's a lot of black in this, as you can see, when it kind of reduces down here. So this could be wonderful or a muddy mess. Now I'm back and I've spent some time really shaping this and smoothing it out as you can see. It's nice and even here and I just love the colors in this. I'm really feeling these beads and I really like this as a neat focal bead with some fringe coming down. It's just got a really neat feel to it. This one I basically created the same way, you know, with the four sides but I flattened it more so that two of the sides that I liked the best were enlarged. So once again, I could use this either this way with some fringe hanging down, or I could use it this way. I haven't decided. 
I really am feeling these and I love this one with these tiny little pods hanging off of it. So sometimes when you're creating beads, think of how you're going to use them and how things will complement. And since we've got all these leftover little bits, they all sort of complement each other. Well, now I have this left and I was going to make lentils with it, but I really, really like the way the Natasha beads came out. So I'm going to make more Natasha beads with this. So here's what I got from all of that scrap clay. I got this beautiful focal lentil, which I will put some canes on later. I got these nice little barrel type of beads. And I've got these two cabs, which I just was playing with them. And somehow I felt like these could be kind of interesting in some bead embroidery. And then I've got these larger focal beads. So just that little bit of scrap, look at what beautiful beads we got out of it. Now we're back to our colors. I only have this one cane left, which I know what I'm gonna do with. Now I have literally little bits and baubles of clay here. I have these little bits of green, and I have this blue, um, and a, like a scooch of yellow. So I'm thinking the obvious with the green is to do a leaf cane. I'm going to take this little piece of dark, the medium, and this little piece of light. Now I know there's not gonna be a huge difference, but this is what I have to work with. Now this is actually not a bad graduation of color, so I'm just going to work with what we have here because I really would like a leaf cane just to finish off the edges of some of those beads we've made. So this is when it gets a little tricky. I'm down to the ends of my colors here. I have a little bit of purple and blue, but I'm trying to save that with this little scooch of white. And I've got some of these colors to use as the center of my cane here. So I have a tiny bit of black, which I'm going to add to the screen and keep my fingers crossed because I really don't know that it's going to be enough. So I'm going to add it a little bit at a time to this khaki color. It's a kind of an odd color. And I'm hoping if I add just a little at a time, I can slowly get the color I want to make a contrast on here. So I've got my darker piece that we added some of the black to, and here's the original color we started with. So we're definitely darker but as you can see, I'm just not quite there yet. So I'm going to add the rest of the black, but I want to have just a little piece for the middle of this cane. And this is actually a nice contrast color. Here is my middle. Push that in just to get that black in there, blend down a little bit thinner. So we definitely have our leaf there. Now my problem is there's definitely not enough of this color. Out of desperation, we are just going to mix up whatever's left and make a color to wrap that leaf in. I think there's enough to wrap this cane. And we have a little bit of scraps left over so we can always use this as bead filler if nothing else. Now moving on, let's see what we have left here. Pink and the blue and the purple let's i'm going to make a plug out of this one with this purple and since i don't have much of it we'll just wrap a little bit around here because we're going to make i'll mix it with some of this purple i don't know if this is too close to this no it's not okay we'll use these two colors so i'll take this white and mix it into a lavender and I'm going to mix this up just because it's mauve and it's not consistent throughout. So now I have my little piece of mauve that's left. We are literally down to scoochy little pieces, but we're gonna make this work. This is when it gets to be a little bit more of a challenge. It just means that your canes are smaller and all of our little leftovers that are similar to this we're going to put 
into this pile and see what we're going to do with that at the end. So we've got this cane, we've got all this pretty translucent. So this is an easy one to tint. This orange, red, and yellow, and then blue and silver. I'm feeling maybe we should take this translucent and some of this pretty turquoise and mix these guys up. So here's how the translucent and some of the blue came out. Now the challenge begins and let's take all these light colors because maybe I can use what's left of this purple. Let's try this, this blue and some of this gold. I don't know, I'm gonna try a small piece with the gold so I don't wreck it. And well, if we don't have the gold work, we'll use the purple with the blue. So let's see how this comes out. And I know we're gonna be able to use this, so we'll, we'll mix this up and see what we get here. Well, I had a few successes and a fail. This one looks nice, this one looks nice, and this one looks like mud. Actually, it's not too muddy. It's, it's just that this is pretty translucent, so I'm not sure it's even gonna show up. I'm feeling like we should put this one on and when I get to these tiny canes at the end and there's not a lot left I'm not real fussy about how I put this on because it is what it is and this one oh, well this one's bigger so we're gonna put that one on top and we can do it just like this and just like this and because this clay was really funky and was very hard to condition, I am going to reduce this one right away and wait to finish the other ones because I don't think that this one's going to be very cooperative. So to reduce this, I'm just going to reduce, stretch it out, cut it into fours, put it back together and do that again. Let's see how that does for me. Okay, we'll cut this in half. And then... Now I'll keep these off to the side because those were just my little cane ends. And now we're going to cut it into fours again. Or you can start to see the design that we're getting. That is so pretty just the way it is. I am going to just put a core in it. And for a core, I am going to take these. Oh, it's okay that we have dark on there because I'm putting dark in the middle anyway. So we're gonna use this darker color because it's the, literally the darkest color I have. the end of our yellow and this we're gonna make the center of our flower but we need to reduce it This one, I'm liking it just the way it is. So 
that one came out. Now this one will reduce the exact same way. So I'll Well, we've got the little leaf cane reduced. Here's one of them that's just the end of it, but here's one that's a, a nice clean end. So you can see I've got all of this out of that. And here's some of the scraps that we'll make some lentil leaves out of. I've got plans for every piece here. And then we've got these little burst flowers. This is just the end of the cane I haven't cut, and this is the end that I did cut, just to give you a better idea. And this is when you get to the end, you're working with what you've got, and this is one more of those flower canes. So we've got quite a bit. And then I've got a red one. Whoops, there's the smaller version and the larger version. And these are all the ends. I didn't want to cut them off because I just don't want to have too many ends right now. I want to use as much of the cane as I possibly can. And then I've got the ends of those two flower canes. Now I still have this little piece of flower center left and I have the red, the orange, this little bit of gold, this gold, and this funny silver left. So now to see what we could do with this, I like the red the best and I've got a lot of it. So let's take the largest piece of clay, which it's sort of a tie, but I think the gold is the largest. I'm going to mix this gold together and make a plug out of it. And I think we'll make a cane using the orange and the red. So now I've got the gold into a nice little plug here and my choices are getting slim. So we're just gonna work with what we have here because not much else I can do. And that's the fun of challenging yourself to work with things that you normally wouldn't. Sometimes you come out with really neat stuff and if it comes out a mess, it's clay. What's the worst that happens? We have brown clay or muddy clay and we just put some mica powder on it. That's the absolute worst thing. And here you have our cane, and this was just literally tiny scraps. You can see this is about an inch and a half. It's a very small cane, but it'll be fine. And here's that cane reduced down, and you can see how beautiful it comes out, even though those colors weren't the first colors I would have ever picked. But sometimes... Well, I'm back, and it's the next day, so my canes have been sitting for hours, and now they're stiffening up, and I've already taken this lentil bead that we've made out of the leftover scraps. I just put a few little leaves around the edges, and I'm going to do that to the other side. By adding the leaves, it really switches this up and makes it look like just a little design element in the middle, where this one, ha this side, which isn't decorated, has a little bit more of a muddy look to it. I don't really want that muddy look. I want highlighted look. Now if you're looking at the edges you'll see that I don't have the leaves all the way down to the edges. That was intentional. And the reason I did it you'll understand in a minute. But I'm going to add the flowers to this side and I'll speed that up just so that you can see how I do it. And I pinch my cane as I go. That way I can keep my leaf nice and crisp as I'm going. Now I put them both so that their base of the leaf are on the opposite side. And I like to mirror my leaves when I do both sides of this. Now when I add my next leaf, I add it up a little bit. I like to leave that little gap there, and I want my leaves to not be perfectly matched. Now if you like your leaves perfectly matched, leave them like that. Now I'm going to take these little flower canes. I'm going to use these as the edging. So I've cut that one so I have a nice clean edge, and I'm just going to take my needle tool and just create some petals. That will switch this up so it doesn't just look like a blob of clay. And I'll do the same thing with this one. And now I go back in and add my little petal definitions again before I cut them. 
and re-adding those petal definitions, you can sort of see where you've already had the petals. They're just not far enough in to really define them like I prefer. And now I'll put my little flowers right at the edges here. Now this does take some time. What a difference that makes. Now make sure all of your little canes are well embossed into your bead. And if it, like this had a little bit of an oval shape to it, I'm just reshaping it a bit. So here's what we have that were just from the leftover scraps that we created, the lentil and the Natasha beads, and just embossing them with those little cane scraps. So this is what I have left. I have this plate with my muddy clay that I didn't use for anything. A few little beads that I haven't decided if I'm going to emboss the ends of them with whatever canes I have. And then this big giant cane. Now you're probably wondering why am I not using this big giant cane? I wanted to use as much of the clay to create canes which I created here. This was the canes that we created. Saving these and I'm going to reduce this one and start working with this one. I already have two of these big origami beads. I may make, let's make a smaller one. So I'll reduce this cane down a little bit, make a smaller one and make some smaller beads with this because I don't want too much of just the same thing. It gets monotonous to work with the same thing over and over again. It's really hard when you're doing this. You have to think about the muddy clay and try not to use the muddy clay up right away, but to save it for your beads because this is the clay that you want the least of and you really, don't, I don't want beads out of this. This just doesn't do anything for me. So whatever I do, I'm going to cover this clay and use this as the center for my beads. And here you can see with adding that red, what it adds a complete spark of color. Now there is a lot of red already in these, so it just picks that up. So don't be afraid if you don't have the exact colors. Pick up another complementary color, it'll make it work. Now I have a lot of this cane left and I really want some round beads. And now I've got all of those little scraps of clay fit into beads, which is nice, but I still have a lot of this cane left and I don't have much filler. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take the rest of these scraps, see how many more beads I can make with this. And surprisingly, I got 74 beads with just that extra little scrap of clay. So that built me a really nice stash. I have these four pods left over of scrap clay, and I have this little piece of scrap clay I'm gonna make a pod out of also. So I'm going to use this leaf cane that we created. And here's those little pods that I finished up just by using some of those leaf canes. Now I have a lot of these canes that I want to turn into just single flower beads. So this is a homemade market tool and I'm just going to where the little marks are on there to cut it so I have evenly spaced beads. I want my beads kind of chunky and I'm just going to press in randomly little petals in each one on each side. I will take the rest of this cane and slice it up into beads. Now I have two pieces of this leaf cane. I want to cut them in, into beads. And this will give me a nice slice of a leaf that I can pinch at the end and create a perfect little bead. I can just hit, simply take a skewer and skewer it through the center like that. Well, this is what's left of the green and yellow canes and I'm going to cut these up and make lentils out of them, probably lentil leaves, but let's see what I get. I'm not sure whether I'm going to like these or not. Well, now I have a dilemma because I really love the color of these. I Green is one of my favorite colors, especially mossy kind of greens and um, these are just talking to me way too much and I like them just as they are as lentils, so not going to be my scrap clay to fill my, bead, my beads with. Oh. Don't cringe, but we're gonna start to make some beads with these just as they are. Now there's two ways we can do it to reduce these and slice them into canes like we did the flowers and to do a what I call a controlled Natasha. Twisting my cane and basically wrecking it on the inside. I want a smaller piece. It's easier to get this to twist and now I'm going to just square it back off. And the reason I'm squaring it back off is it's just easier to put it back together when you have a square piece versus a round piece. And I just wanna make this a bit smaller. 
and now we're going to cut it in half and then half again and now you can see where that design has moved. And see what a beautiful Natasha that makes. And if you don't see the mirrored side just keep flipping it. It's there you just have it upside down or something in your hand. Just be patient. Sometimes when you're doing this it seems like nothing matches and then all of a sudden it's like a puzzle. It'll just come together. And I will play with these and make these into some beads and be right back. And here are those finished beads from that one piece of cane. I used half of this and this is what I've gotten out of that same size piece. So I've gotten two beads that I could use for earrings and one that I could use for a pendant. Now I will let these set up for a little bit because right now the clay is too manipulated. It's too warm. I can't get a perfect shape out of it and I can reshape them better once they cool down and stiffen up a little bit again. Now I'm going to take this other cane that I have left over and reduce it. I want to reduce it down into a bead that I can slice. So I've reduced my cane quite a bit and since it's so long now. I'm just going to cut it in half. I still have quite a bit of integrity. I was worried this was going to get really muddy, but actually it's not. It's quite nice. I'm just going to slice this into beads. So I'm going to mark this. So I'm going to leave them thicker. And you can see that they've distorted a little bit after I cut them, but it's okay. We're just going to reshape them. And the easiest way to let them set up is I just like to put them on a piece of paper and let them sit for a couple hours. So I have these beads already that I've cut up and I still have this piece of cane. I feel like I have enough of these beads. They're, they're okay. I like these beads better, these cabochons out of the same cane. So I'm going to make more of these cabochons. I'm really liking this teardrop one and this round one. I feel like I could do a lot more with those. And sometimes when you're playing with clay like this, you really want to look at what can you do the most with. It's not about making the most beads, it's making the most usable beads. Now out of that piece of cane, I got all of these cabs and I cut the backs off so I've got all of these scraps. And these scraps are going to be perfect with my other canes because I really wanted to make some beads out of some of these other canes. Now this is the cane that I wanted to make some round beads with and I was looking for bead filler for so that I could create these. I just like the way they look. I know they don't really look like flowers and that's kind of what I really liked about them. They're just sort of like little starburst explosions and they make such a nice complement to some of the other beads. So I'm just using up whatever scraps I have left here and this cane just out of that little flower burst cane I got 42 of these little burst flowers which are really beautiful and seven of these larger flowers. So that was going on to this gold cane and I want to make some marguerite beads out of this because this would make a really pretty clasp. So I'm just going to take my market. Now I am going to go in between these because I don't need them this thick. Just like my other flower I'm going to mark out the petals on both sides. Then I'm going to take my rubber tool and just dip into the petals so that I flatten them out a little bit. So that this way I have like a little flat bead. This is what I love to use in my bead embroidery and my clasps. And I like to make these all different sizes and then I'll just skewer it. I'm just going to take the rest of this cane and make it into different size marguerite beads. Now out of that golden flower cane I got 26 marguerite beads that I can use in all sorts of things and 10 of these little flower beads. So you get quite actually drum roll please this is the end of the box is all I have left and what I'm going to do with this is make some marguerite flowers. And just like my lentils, I'm going to roll these out. 
I don't mind that this is more of an oval than a circle. But to create my marguerite, I'm just going to take a needle tool and make a little well in the middle and pinch the edges of my flowers. So that's all there is to it. Now when I bead with this, I can put little crystals inside and it'll give it more of a petunia type of a look. And from those little scraps of clay that we had left over, I got 30 of these marguerite style flowers. So you get quite a bit out of just little scraps of clay. Now my real work begins because I still have to glaze all these beads. Anywhere I've used gold leaf, I need to glaze that bead or the gold leaf will wear off. All of these beads need to be brushed on or strung and dunk. Either way, it takes some time to glaze these beads, but once I get them glazed, we can bead with them together. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I gave you lots of ideas and thanks for watching.